All right, hey everybody, Justin with Lake Mary Ariel, Buffalo Justin on RC Groups. And uh, what I'm going to talk about real quick is how to map traditional channels uh, on your Lightbridge 2 transmitter if you're using an A2 flight controller system. Um, and this video is actually supposed to be part of a much longer video uh, showing the install, uh, but I'm having a few snags with my uh, GH3 gimbal, or correction, my GH4 gimbal. Uh, so I'm going to hold off on publishing that video until I can get my AV board fixed. Uh, so in the meantime, what I think we're going to talk about is uh, what most people are most confused about with Lightbridge 2, and that's how do I have any traditional channels, uh, say for landing gear or uh, you know LEDs or anything like that, uh, since there's no you know switches really like a traditional uh, transmitter. Uh, and I think that's what a lot of people are kind of worried about giving up their, you know, their Tyrannus or their Futaba or Spectrum or whatever transmitter that they like to use uh, in place of one of these, but they still want to use a light bridge. Uh, if you're using an A2, you are going to get four traditional channels, as far as I understand it right now. And I, I just looked at this real briefly, but I'm going to show you how you're going to be able to use um, some traditional channels. Uh, first thing you're going to do, of course, is, and I already have my, my uh, counter hooked up to assistant software. And like I said, I'm using an A2. Let's see if I can get this to focus. Okay, so you're going to go into A2 assistant and just go into the map channel section. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to go right over here to your direct channels. All right. And direct channels are the ones you're going to be able to map, and uh, of course D1, D2, D3, and D4 correspond to the F ports that are actually on the A2 main control unit. Uh, so that's where you're going to plug in a servo lead. So uh, F1 on the air unit, or on the uh, A2 unit, is going to correspond to D1, and so, so on and so forth. So what you're going to do is, to map those, is click the unmap button, and then on your transmitter here, you're just going to select a control that is uh, mappable. So on this transmitter you have a few um, controls that you can work with. Uh, there's a major drawback to it and I'll talk about that in a second. But you have the transform switch which of course would put a, I, I think it puts the Inspire uh, landing gear up and down. I don't have an Inspire so I don't know. But you have that one. Um, you have this wheel right here which is also a button, and that's kind of interesting, so we're going to talk about that one in a second. You have that momentary, this momentary, that momentary. This right here defaults to gimbal tilt. So if I move my camera over here, you can see that it controls the tilt of my gimbal. And that's by default. Um, it's actually transmitting that through CAN bus, because remember, with Lightbridge 2, your gimbal is going to be talking uh, through CAN bus. Um, let's see, and then you have two on the back here. So you have that button and that button. Uh, what you may notice already, may have noticed, is that uh, a lot of, if not almost every single one of these, is a momentary switch. All right, there's only one permanent switch, and that's your transform switch. Um, so that is, that's a, an issue, uh, as I can see it, and it, well, it's going to be an issue for a lot of people. For me, it's not going to be such a big deal, because I don't really have a lot of stuff mapped to switches. Um, my major one is going to be my landing gear. Of course, I'm going to use this switch for it. Um, this one's kind of interesting, and you're going to have to see it move on the assistant software here. So let me see if I can get this zoomed in so you can actually make this out. Okay. All right, so that, that wheel right here that's also a button, watch, watch as I move this. It's kind of like a momentary and a, a position switch as well. So if I just spin it, it doesn't go anywhere. If I press it, it moves to that position. Now if I press it again, nothing will happen. I have to move it again and then press it and it'll move. If I move it that way and press it, it'll go back down. If I move it that way and then press it, it'll go up. So, 
Um, I don't know. Yeah, kind of kind of weird there. That may be useful. Um, I think I'm actually going to use this one uh, to control <laughs> my parachute, uh, my parachute recovery system on my Octo. Um, I, and my thinking is I can... It's like really deliberate to have to use that. Like you're going to have to hit it, spin it, hit it, spin it, hit it, spin it, hit it, spin it, hit it. I don't know. Um, it kind of takes a while, and you don't really have that much time to deploy a parachute. But I really don't know what else to do because I'm not going to deploy my parachute. Maybe a combination of two. Uh, I don't know. Um, okay, so that's that one. <clears throat> Let's see what other ones we got here. So the transform goes to channel 5. Um, this button up here in the corner, which has the little play arrow on it, that will be 13. Channel 13. Um, this one right above it here is 12. Again, we already talked about 14, which is the weird wheel switch thing. On the other side, we have the record button, which is going to be 11. And on the back side, these two buttons here. That is nine, and on the other side, the right side as you hold it is ten. Uh, so, if you want to map, you know D1. I think we, we selected here. Yeah, we did D1. Uh, I'm going to use D1 for my retracts. So I'm going to hit that switch. Of course, it's the transform one right here. All right, we can see it moving. I'm going to hit select, and now it's mapped. D1 is is mapped to uh, channel five on transmitter which is that transform and now all I need to do is plug in my retract servo uh, lead into F1 over here on the air unit. So that's how simple it is to use it. Um, yeah a lot of I don't, I don't think a lot of people are going to be happy with how much flexibility this gives them especially not in, you know, relation to, you know, like using a 16-channel traditional transmitter like Tyrannus. Um, but it is what it is as of right now. So at least you will get at a minimum of four channels that you can map out. Uh, and there may be something coming out that lets you get more. Uh, I think right now it looks like the most limiting part of all this is the fact that every single one of them except two and kind of really one of the uh, control surfaces or you know button switches whatever you want to call them on the transmitter are momentaries um, but so that's what we have so far and uh, i'll try to get the install video uh, for lightbridge 2 up as soon as i can um, it is working it is working I, I don't have any footage to show you right now um, i got it working with this little camera plugged directly into the uh, hd port on the Lightbridge 2 air side, um, but again, my, my GH4 gimbal, uh, the AV unit in it is not passing video, so I can't get my main camera video through it right now. But uh, keep watching the channel, and I'll get more Lightbridge 2 videos up as, as I can. Thanks for watching.